Hi, I'm Courtney. I'm a clothing designer. My shop is called Coco Clem, and I'm gonna teach you how to make your own triangle top bikini, whether you're a size extra, extra small or 6X. I've had my own swimwear line for a few years, and I've spent a lot of time developing the different patterns and testing them on different sizes to ensure the perfect fit. Here are the things that you're going to need for the project. Most of these items you can get on Wawak. It's one of my favorite sewing supply shops and I'll link everything below. This is not a sponsored video. These are just my favorite tools that I've used for many years. For this project, you'll need to find a fabric that's 80% polyester and 20% spandex with a four-way stretch. A four-way stretch means you'll be able to stretch the fabric in all directions for better flexibility and comfort. For the lining, I like using this very thin buttery soft lining that's made of 88% recycled nylon and 12% spandex. As for cutting tools, we'll need to gather sewing shears, paper shears, thread snips, and a seam ripper. Hopefully not needed, but good to have just in case. You'll also need a sewing needle with a big eye, sewing pins, a loop turner, a soft measuring tape, a clear 18 inch ruler, and different types of elastic depending on what size sewing pattern you choose. If you're a size extra, extra small to 2X, I recommend getting this 1 4th of an inch rubber elastic. And then if you're a size 3X and up, I recommend this 3 8 of an inch cotton swimwear elastic. Or if you're just someone who really wants that extra support, I would recommend this 3 8 of an inch cotton elastic. I'm gonna show you how to make this swimwear pattern with a size extra, extra small. So I'm gonna be using this 1 4th of an inch elastic. But again, if you're a size 3X and above, or or if you just want the extra support, use the 3 8 of an inch elastic. And this will be used where I use this. Additionally, we'll need to grab a safety pin and polyester thread of your choice. I developed this homeware pattern with an 80% polyester and 20% spandex blend. I would try to stay as close to those ratios as you can for your swimsuit. Once we start getting into nylon blends and switching up the percentages, the garment might not stretch and lay like intended. That is just something to keep in mind. If you find a fabric that you really like in a totally different ratio, you just might have to do a little bit more pattern fitting and adjusting. So just be prepared for that. Okay, so for this top, we're gonna have to take our measurements. So if you don't have a soft measuring tape, we need that. If you have someone to help you, perfect. But if not, no worries, you can probably do this by yourself. You're gonna take the measuring tape and you're gonna measure it around your bust. So we're going around the apex, the fullest part of the bust. And then we're gonna measure the rib cage just underneath the bust where your bra band fits. So go ahead and write those down and we'll figure out what size sewing pattern we need. For my sewing pattern, you're really just going to need to go by your bust measurement. We can customize the under bust because it's a string bikini. To prepare the pattern, use a straight ruler and mark and cut where the pattern edge ends. Then align the pattern pieces, overlapping them until they match perfectly and secure them in place with tape. But before we get started, let's check the scale box to confirm it measures 10 centimeters or approximately four inches. So now let's begin to cut out our pattern, but first let's identify the grain of the fabric. The grain of the fabric refers to the direction of the threads. When cutting out the fabric, it's crucial to place the pattern on grain. Additionally, if your fabric has a print, ensure that it's oriented correctly before cutting. And then we'll strategically place the pattern to minimize fabric waste. Although this sewing method may not be the quickest, it's well suited for home sewers tackling projects individually as intended with this pattern. The pattern specifies cutting two outer pieces and two lining pieces. Therefore, cut two cups from the outer fabric and two more for the lining fabric. The seam allowance is already included in the pattern, so we'll simply just cut around the piece and you don't have to worry about that right now. You can pin the cups in place, but keep in mind that sewing pins can leave puncture marks on the fabric. So sometimes I like to use weights for securing the pattern in place. Now that we have our two cups, let's proceed to cutting out the lining. Once again, Pay attention to the grain and ensure vertical alignment. Now that you should have two linings along with two cups, it's time to cut out our straps. The straps that tie around our neck, I always do 18 inches for every size. You can adjust them if you want, but I find that 18 inches works best for most people. And then for the underbust, we're going to take the measurement that we took before, and then we're going to add 12 inches to it. So take your underbust measurement and add 12 to it, and that's going to be the length that you're going to cut the string for the underbust. 
If you want an extra long string that wraps around, you can play with that measurement. It's very customizable. Begin by folding your fabric in half. Ensure that when it's folded, the fabric is long enough for your underbust measurement plus 12 inches. Might be a bit tricky to see, but once the fabric is folded, you'll have the center front marked with the raw edge at the bottom and a nice flat edge along one side. Grab your clear ruler and align it with the edge of the fabric. For easier marking, place the ruler flush with the fabric's edge and mark one and a quarter inches with the scissors. Then fold that marked piece up and fold the fabric to use it as a stencil for cutting. Repeat this process to cut out the rest of your underbust strap in the same way. Once you have your strap cut out, ensure it measures your underbust measurement plus 12 inches. And here's a handy little trick. Once you find your full measurement on the soft measuring tape, mark it and then fold the measuring tape in half, matching the opposite end of the tape to the mark. Follow the tape back to the center and it will indicate half of your measurement. That way you don't have to do all this math in your head. Double check by measuring from the center fold to the raw edge. And if needed, make adjustments by marking and cutting any excess length. Remember to cut from the end and not from the center to maintain one continuous piece. To keep the print consistent, rotate your fabric to reorient it. Since your straps are 18 inches, you only need to cut out nine inches from the center fold. Measure an inch and a quarter away from the edge, clip it, fold up the fabric, and continue folding and cutting. While there are various cutting methods like using a rotary cutter and mat, this is the simplest approach for me. When folding, ensure that all of the fabric is flush with the edge and that nothing is tucked underneath. It may take some practice, but that's perfectly fine. Once your pieces are flat, measure nine inches up from the center fold and cut off any excess fabric. Repeat this for both pieces. And now all of our straps are cut and it's time to sew. After cutting everything out, you should have two outer pieces, two linings, two shoulder straps, and one underbust strap. For the sewing portion of this video, I'm going to be using my brother 1034D serger, industrial Juki straight stitch, and my Juki cover stitch MCS 1500 machine. You don't need all of these machines, so don't be overwhelmed. You can make a swimsuit with just a home sewing machine. If you want to see how a bikini swimwear designer makes one, this is what I'm going to show you, but I'm going to make it very accessible and tell you how you can make it with your home sewing machine as well. If you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch. And if you don't have a cover stitch machine, you can use a twin needle in your home sewing machine. The twin needle will give you that iconic double stitch that you see in a lot of knit apparel. If you do want to invest in a cover stitch machine though, because you sew a lot of knits, I highly recommend it. And for my last machine, I'm going to be sewing on my Juki straight stitch industrial machine. You don't need an industrial machine. You can just use your regular straight stitch. To begin, let's gather all of our bikini strings, pins, and elastic. Fold the bikini string in half and place the tip of the elastic at the top edge of the fabric. Pin it in place, ensuring a secure hold. This step definitely requires pins, especially for beginners. Pin the elastic down along each strap before sewing. Remove the first pin on the strap before placing it under your sewing foot and lower the sewing foot. Lightly pull the thread tail as you start feeding the elastic through the machine. Remove the pins as you go, or if you're up for challenge you can sandwich your right pointer finger between the folded strap and the elastic while sewing be sure to catch both edges of the fabric and the elastic under the foot snip the elastic at the end then continue sewing the last little bit you'll repeat this process for each piece and remember to use the pins and gently pull the threads if the elastic isn't feeding through smoothly once all the straps are sewn use a loop turner or a safety pin if you don't have one to turn each bikini string right side out now with our outer triangle tops right side up, focus on the side seams of the straps. The side seams should face outwards, so the left cup's strap side seam should be on the left side, and the right cup's strap side seam should be on the right side. Match the raw edge of the strap to the middle of the top of the cup and pin it in place. Next, you'll layer the lining on top, sandwiching the straps. Hold the straps in place before removing the initial pin and repin it from the top of the lining fabric. Ensure everything stays flat and secure while you sew this edge. I prefer sewing two passes over the strap for added durability, especially since it's an area of the garment that experiences tension. Let's start by turning the garment inside out with the front outer fabric of the triangle top facing towards you. Since this fabric is thicker than the lining, we'll attach the elastic to this side. Lay both pieces down and now we're ready to add the elastic to the side seams of the swimsuit. This step is crucial as it provides essential structure, 
shape and support to the garment. With the elastic pinned to the wrong side of the outer fabric, ensure both layers of the fabric and the elastic are pinned in place, making sure each piece of fabric is flush with each other. Each cup should have elastic pinned to the side seams, totaling four pieces. Leave the bottom of the cup open with the bikini string sandwiched inside. Proceed to sew each of the four pieces of elastic down using either a zigzag stitch or a serger. Once completed, turn the triangle top right side out. Now you have the choice of how to finish the top of your triangle bikini. While there are various methods, I find that top stitching provides a cleaner finish, prevents the lining from rolling and showing in the front, and results in a more durable and structured bikini. To prepare for top stitching, push the elastic towards the out seam as you pin, ensuring a nice tight seam. When it comes to stitching, you can use either a zigzag, twin needle, or a cover stitch, if available. If you use a cover stitch, the result will look seamless from the back to the front. After completing the stitching, secure all loose ends by tying knots and weaving the top threads towards the back of the garment with a sewing needle if you're using a cover stitch machine. Now let's proceed to sew the raw edge of the bottom of the bikini top closed. If you don't have a serger, you can leave the raw edge as is for now. When we stitch the channel closed later, just make sure to catch the raw edge of the channel with your zigzag stitch. Now let's move on to sewing the channel on the bottom. When pinning and sewing the channel down, remember to stretch the fabric as you go to ensure the correct length. If not stretched properly, the channel may end up too long, causing overlap or irregularities. At the sewing machine, start by backstitching, then gently stretch the fabric with your left hand while gently guiding and folding the channel with your right hand if you're not using pens. And if you are, carefully take them out one by one as you sew. While I usually eyeball the folding length because I've done this a million times, it's always a good idea to double check measurements from the pattern to ensure accuracy. Once you reach the end, backstitch again and clip any loose threads. With the channel sewn, it's time to thread the underbus band through the cups using a safety pin. Begin by threading the right cup with the right out seam strap first, then proceed to the left cup. Ensure the out seam of the underbus band faces downward as you thread the cups. Once everything is evenly threaded through, tie a knot at each end of the bikini straps and trim any excess fabric from the knots. And congratulations, you've just completed your Coco Klim triangle top bikini. Thank you so much for trying this tutorial. Let me know how it goes for you. Let me know if you feel like there are better ways to go about making the triangle top. Let me know if you have any preferences. This is just one of the many ways to sew this top. I've tried pretty much every way to sew a triangle top, but this one I like best. It seems the cleanest. I don't know, I just like it. I have a mid-rise thong, a cheeky bottom, and a scoop neck top on the way. So be sure to subscribe if you would like some more swimwear to Tutorials. I have four more bikinis headed your way. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions.